This is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. On this micro SD and SIM tray, there's a black insert which is covering the SIM portion since the Galaxy Tab S8 doesn't have SIM support. I did however remove the insert and test the SIM card inside this tablet, but still it didn't detect the SIM. The software isn't optimized to read SIM cards, as well as the fact that there is no IMEI registered to this device. So even if you were able to enable it somehow in the software, or flash a different software that has support for the SIM, I don't see how it would work without an IMEI or ESM being assigned to this device. Once the SIM tray is removed, we need to apply heat to the front of the screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the screen off. Once the screen is loose from the frame, it needs to be lifted up from the bottom to the top, the top being where the front facing camera is. At that point, there's a protective tape or the flex cable connector on the screen. And once that tape is peeled back, there's a lock on the connector which needs to be lifted up to release the flex cable. There's graphite film over this portion of the back of the screen and the graphite film helps transfer heat. There are 29 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the plastic cover can be removed. There's an antenna line drawn on the corner of this plastic cover. And on the other side, there's a magnet and two microphones. One is located here and one on this side. Now, before we continue, we need to disconnect the battery cable. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. This flex cable connects the main board to the screen. This one connects the main board to the subboard, and this one to the bottom pins where it docks to the keyboard. The 13 megapixel wide and 6 megapixel ultra wide cables can also be disconnected. Next to be disconnected is the 12 megapixel front facing camera. followed by the flex cable for the SIM card or memory card reader. There are two coaxial cables that need to be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. Taking a closer look at the main board, there are two proximity sensors, one is located here and the other one on this side. There's a third microphone located here on the board and there's graphite film over the shields to help transfer heat. Here's a better look at it with the graphite film removed. Looking at the other side, there's an LED flash located here and some copper tape covering these shields. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste cleaned off. Now it's time to remove the subboard. There are six Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The charger port is located in the center of the subboard, and this flex cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. Now moving on to the speakers. This tablet has four of them. There's also a vibrator motor which is located right here with the speaker. There are four more Phillips screws that need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, there's also some strong adhesive underneath the speakers which are holding it down, so we're going to have to apply some heat and pry those speakers off. Here's a look at the speaker, and there's a mesh filter over the opening. For this speaker, we need to peel off this flex cable. And there's an antenna board on the corner of this speaker. 
the flex cable for the speaker needs to be peeled off as well. There's another antenna board on this speaker as well. Here's a better look at the cameras, and the cameras don't have OIS or optical image stabilization. This flex cable over here is for the S Pen, as well as these magnets. Unless I missed any, there are a total of 14 magnets in this tablet. There's a magnet here, here, one on this speaker. There's three magnets here, three over here, two on this side, and two over here. There's also one on the bottom here. Moving on, the SIM card reader and memory card reader is located here. And this is held down with adhesive, so you can just pry it off if you need to. And for those who are wondering, the SIM reader does have the pins, but again, the software doesn't support it, so it's not enabled on the software of this tablet. And if someone were to enable it in the software, I'm not sure if it would work, since there's no IMEI attached to this tablet. The flex cable for the volume keys and the power button, as well as the fingerprint reader, is located here and it's held down with some adhesive. So if you need to replace those, you gently have to pry off the flex cable, and then you'd pull out these metal brackets by lifting them up and removing them from the frame. The vibrator motor is located over here and it's held on with adhesive. And this plastic cover is held on with adhesive too, so if you want to replace this flex cable, which leads to the pins on the bottom, you just have to pry this plastic piece off. Now when it comes to removing the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help pry the battery off. So we're going to have to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry off. Here's a better look at the battery. For the repairability score, I give this tablet a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put it back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the screen. Power it on and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.